five. Uh, five. Yeah, so we started the little project about three years ago, so it's been on Moodle.net for two or three years now. Um, the templates, even if you're not making uh, learning objects, it's still a really fast way to make really in, uh, interactive, uh, complex Moodle quiz questions as well. Um, so if you're having to do that quite often, it'll save you loads of time. This is what some of them look like. This is the journey. And ONG is obviously our women's health module for our um, med school. So we had to have some parameters. Um, we wanted it to be interactive, wanted to go in the grade book. Um, we needed to have text entry. A lot of learning objects don't have that. Good price. Um, and lots of analysis at the back end that the Moodle provides. So that was some of our key points. We looked at a few. H5P unfortunately came out afterwards, so we use quite a bit of that now. Um, CuraCloud is an Otago thing, which was developed down um, in Dunedin. Articulate, my colleagues wanted to use that, but again, that's far too pricey. And then the sharing of the tools and authoring it becomes quite a problem. So I was quite keen at looking at um, what we could do with Moodle. And so we looked at a few pages. Obviously, content pages have come out since then as well. So that's another thing that's been good. And I was quite keen to see what Quiz could do. But obviously, there's a few issues. Good thing is our staff already know how to use it. So it's one tool. Keep to the same tool. It's always a good rule. Text entry, free. Um, and integrates with Moodle in the gradebook. Unfortunately, Moodle is pretty clunky. Um, the Moodle quiz tool doesn't look really like learning objects. Um, and a lot of the complex questions take a really long time to make, so how can we get around that? So we addressed some of those issues. We created a whole bunch of templates. Um, then we uh, changed our theme to adaptable, which enabled us to expand it to full screen, making it look more like learning objects. We put in a load more question types and um, investigated those more. And um, we added in a few plugins and stuff and started looking at things like Plotagon and stuff like that. So those are the templates. They're downloadable from Moodle.net. They've been there a few years now. I just updated some of them the other day. Um, so 60 odd of them. You might ask why we have so many of the same type. Um, and when you start doing it, you'll see that um, quite obviously you don't want the same look and feel from all the same question types, but all of them have different ways of feeding back. Um, they take up different real estate. So if you use 20 true false questions, you're going to have a page that's about that long. So you want to make that into a shorter space. A lot of um, development into just making them look like learning objects as opposed to just the standard Moodle questions. And on the way, we found out a few things about Moodle Quiz. Um, so Moodle Quiz obviously doesn't work when you start upscaling it to lots of answers and stuff. Essay question isn't good for immediate feedback. Lots of learning objects, you put in your answer, and then you see what the model answer is, compare. Essay won't do that. Drag and drop matching, that doesn't work after you've got eight or 10 options, because it's just scroll of death. Um, and the embedded question, gives you lots more functionality for stuff. Matching questions, one of the poor things that Moodle doesn't do is um, for it, it, if you're trying to learn as you go, you want to see as you res respond each time and have each multiple try, the feedback for each multiple option. And that none of the questions seem to do that very well either. Pass and match turned out to be our answer to immediate feedback. And if you're doing interactive multiple tries, it takes a long time to add all those multiple tries if you've got st standard quizzes that are already been built up. So what do these templates look like? So image templates, you can see on the right there, that, um, that's what the template looks like. So now all you need to do is choose how many um, items you want, chuck that in, chuck your picture in, change your labels, job's done. Matching templates, pretty simple as well. Um, different layouts, different the way they feedback, whether you want drag or drop in or drop down menus. Sequencing, Moodle doesn't do that particularly well, but now we have four or five versions of doing that. Categorizing, really hard, complex question type to set up with all the little, getting all the parameters right. Um, now you can choose how many categories you've got, throw in that, change your labels, job done. Gap filling, same again, multiple ways of doing gap filling, all have their own different 
bits and pieces, as we were saying before, true and false. So rather than having loads of true and false, you make one question which has 10 or 20 of true and false, saves lots of real estate. Again, using rating questions, so start to use the embedded question a bit more, so you can do that. Then we got to the fun part, so you can actually start seeing what learning objects look like with pop-up menus and um, lots of bootstrap elements, and that's a standard thing that's in, sitting in Moodle already. So we use modals, hotspots, popovers, even things like interactive maps with um, pop-ups and stuff like that. So when you come by that, we, with the embedded question, we had lots of call for um, uh, log books. Obviously, unfortunately, the assignment doesn't have a response template, so we had to use quiz. Um, we ended up using crazy um, things, but again, it served the purpose, and we now have loads of templates so people can see what we can actually make with an embedded question. As I said before, pattern match is the only one where you can actually put the text in and then see what's going on. So you just put in a bogus answer and it will do what you want. Annotation tool, um, that's another obviously question type plugin. So what you want to think about is the space you're using. Um, you can see why have a, a multiple choice when you can have floating pictures to the side of it to actually make it look like a learning object. Um, look at the text, bring down, maybe make all the text gray. Um, but obviously look at the, the graphics and see how you can make it look less like Moodle and more like a learning object. So when you combine that with um, other tools that are out there, we have H5P, which is quite good now. If you embed that, um, that's giving you even more question types to go with it. We use Plotagon a lot. If you haven't heard of Plotagon, that's um, an animation tool. Stick in your text, make your own scenarios. Um, we use a lot of that in there, our learning objects, so people can go through medical scenarios. And obviously you've got YouTubes and other videos which you can put in your question types and drop into the templates as well. So there's a few um, settings that need to be done. You need, obviously for each quiz you need to have immediate feedback inter or interactive with multiple tries. Um, if you have multiple tries you've got to spend the time to put in the four or five different hints to go with it, otherwise they get the, the answer straight away. And then you also need to set up a question bank at a, at a system level right at the top so that people can see that and get to it and then you'll need to make a quiz bank user role. Um, so that they can actually see up to that category. What are they being used for? We use it for um, lots of pre-tutorials, knowledge checks, um, and we've had Hematology Man turn up on the scene, and um, he's, he's done through Plotagon, and he has lots of adventures doing his um, hematology lectures and stuff and pre-tutorial stuff. Um, and really just taking dull subjects and making them interesting. Still bugs in the system, obviously um, the feedback questions with multiple tries, you're not able to get a feedback for each option that you choose, um, only for a multiple choice question. Drag and drop interfaces would be nice if we did that. And the biggest bug is probably um, you have to choose with the, the quiz user role whether they have full access to the bank and can delete it um, or just duplicate and if they can only duplicate, then they can't migrate it back into their core, so they have to actually export it and then import it back in or put it in a folder which has duplicated questions. So there's a bit of clunky there. That would be nice if the permissions were a little bit better in that respect. But all the good bits, we didn't have to teach them anything because they already knew Moodle. It's much, much faster. You can make loads of quizzes in no time. It saved me loads of time. No migration of content and all that lovely rich analysis that Moodle also gives us all the time. Do we achieve our goal? Kind of. Um, some people jumped on board. We get a lot of more requests now, and it's a, it's a lot easier to make um, learning objects when people send us their little dialogues that they want created. Um, so it's saved us loads of time. Thank you, Scott. Uh, do we have questions? Sorry. I'd really like to read your slides at a slower pace. Yeah, um, are we sharing slides? Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, and you can email me. Okay, thanks. I was stuck with seven minutes, so. Anybody else? Sir. Sure. Thanks, there's a lot of information in your presentation. I just missed the first couple of minutes, so um, how did you actually make the quiz templates? Like, 
Um, a lot of time basically setting up, but just using the standard Moodle questions um, and then standard backgrounds, standard formats. So um, something like the categories question, we realized that people wanted to make them, but there's no question that's set up. And to do those, you have to get all the parameters and all the hotspots and all sort of sorted out. So you basically um, set that up in Photoshop and do all those. And then now instead of spending, say, what, 20 minutes for one question, you can do it in about two. Yeah, so it is. It is just um, a list of yeah, a list of questions that have taken a while to build, but that you can replicate really quickly. And then, since we've had duplication on questions um, for a while in quiz now, that's made things lots and lots faster. Did I hear you correctly when you said that these uh, were available on Moodle.net? That's correct. We're about what in downloads? Yeah, it's in the uh, quiz area. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. I've been there for a wee while. I'm very interested in uh, H5P and just wondering how you get that to report back out to um, yeah, the Yeah, H5P is um, really good. Uh, the thing I have, there's pluses and minuses of it. If you, the thing it doesn't do very well is it doesn't do multiple pages. So you're stuck with either what's called a, a presentation slide or a, I think it's called a column. The column strip goes on forever. It's just a swirl of death and with lots of questions. Um, and the other one is uh, presentation which will give you tabs and those are the only two question types which will give you multiple pages and then score in the gradebook so I think the thing that's against H5P is that um, you can only have one or two of those activities sitting and then scoring in the gradebook I think if you can combine it with that you'd probably use your quiz ones with which you actually want feedback on and then we've just used the, the interesting question types for embedding it so we'll do a direct embed thank you Scott